Coach Martelli, if you want to start us out with an opening statement, then we'll take uh, questions for the players, dismiss them, and then we'll carry on with Coach. Coach? The, uh, the opportunity to compete against a really quality team and a deep team uh, will benefit us moving forward. I am a, I'm not an analytics guy. I, I'm not, I just don't know enough about it to really understand that, but I am numbers. Like any box score that you look at, the numbers tell you why a team won or why a team lost. So 32 bench points, 11 for 17 from the foul line, 13 first half turnovers. So the opportunity to grow is why we're here. And the next time we place play back to back to back, that would be the time where they'll collect your uniform unless you've had a spectacular regular season. So two losses in a row. It's a, it, we all own it. We all own it. We all have a play that we did not execute or a call that we did not make. Pick yourselves up. And then together we move forward to play tomorrow. We'll take questions for the players now, either via Zoom or just let me know and I'll hand you the microphone. Any questions for our players? And Mari, this one's for you. Uh, going up against a familiar face, uh, just talk about that and, and what that was like. Was it weird at all? or? Uh... It was um... – it was definitely weird, um, but at the same time, it was, you know, just good to see him again and, you know, see him happy and, you know, things like that. So um, it was also good to compete against him. You know, we uh, competed against each other in practice a lot, and uh, it was always, a, you know, you know, a real competition out there. So um, I enjoy competing against him for sure. Have you been looking forward to it for a while? Honestly, yes. Um, this is something that we both um, texted each other about since uh, back in whenever it was scheduled. So, um, you know, we was definitely looking forward to this matchup. Two more. I was going to see what, what was the conversation like during the Jersey trade after the game? Um, just good game um, and, you know, way to compete on both ends of the floor. And uh, it's good to good to see him. So. And then just your thoughts on. Ashton Hardaway's night from the three-point line, you know, what was he doing that – what was Memphis doing to get him, to get him open and all that stuff? Um, they were moving the ball well against our zone, and uh, they found, you know, at that time the right guy. And um, he, he made timely shots, um, some that we wish we could have taken away. And um, there's definitely some stuff that we're going to see in film and um, just talk about amongst each other as a team. And um, some things we got to clean up, but it was it was good big big time shots by him. Any questions on Zoom, please? Just go ahead and ask. Uh yeah, Terrace. I guess this one could be for you. It seemed like uh their defense they had a lot of guys crash to the interior. Um, like a lot of times there are like three or four guys on you. So you know what were they doing that made it so difficult to kind of like play in the center of the court? Uh, I would say their pressure defensively uh, had us a little bit of trouble the first half. So we knew coming into halftime that we had to just stay calm. Uh, coach coach told us that we were rushing too much and that we just had to play our game. So second half, it was pretty evident that we were uh, more locked in and calm, cool, calm, and collected and made that comeback. Anything further from the Zoom or in the room? Yeah, I have one. Um, how did switching to the zone defense in that second half help draw that game a little closer? Mario, we'll start with you. Um, it, it slowed their pace down offensively. It took them out of what they wanted to do, which was get downhill. And, uh, you know, then once we collapsed, they found open shooters, and it was kind of their style of play. Um, so getting into the zone kind of mucked up things for them and made them, you know, overthink sometimes on offense. Um, obviously, Ashton Hardaway wasn't overthinking, but um, yeah. T, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, when we went to the zone, it definitely slowed them down. We were able to control the game from there, and 
like uh, Namari said, we made a little bit of timely mistakes in the zone, how we left uh, Ashton wide open for three. So we knew we had to fix that uh, the rest of the second half. Does anybody have anything else for our players? Okay, fellas. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Uh, questions for Coach Martelli, please. Anybody on Zoom or in the room? Yeah, I can start. Um, seemed like Olivier was really leading that comeback charge. How did him going down off of fouls really hurt? Well, um, it's it was just it's just the nature of the game. Like that, he he committed a fifth foul going to the basket, trying to get an offensive rebound. Uh, I forget his fourth one, um, but that's that that's that's the nature of the game. Like you players get in foul trouble. You have situations. That's what we've worked on uh, all preseason. And you actually factor that in. The guy has it going. He gets in foul trouble. When do you sit him? Uh, so all of those things kind of natural. Uh, I was just asked that by some, the radio people and, I'm saying this respectfully. Olivier fouling out did not cost us that game. The fact that we shot 11 for 17 from the foul line and they had 13 first half turnovers, that's what cost us the game. Anything else from Zoom, please? What was the biggest change from the first to the second half in terms of like on the offensive side of things? It's going to sound nuts, but we actually had five guys on the floor breathing in the second half. And in the first half, we did not respond to their physicality, not fouling. They did not foul us. They played, they came up into us and forced us to have, you know, 13 turnover. I, I think I'm right. Uh, we had four guys score in the first half, right? So the major college basketball, one of the things that we have to have is balance. And if four guys score, that's not balance. And we played, we played, try and do something by holding your breath and you will be less effective. And um, second half, I thought even like the beginning stretch and then they hit us and we kept going. Uh, the switch to a make-miss defense uh, helped us. And just the fact that guys – took a breath five turnovers in the second half so we're well aware if we match our number in foul shooting which is 75 percent and we have five turnovers each half then we're playing whatever is the early or late game tomorrow night i don't know but that wasn't the big we'll take one more question anybody in the room or on zoom you kind of touched on it earlier but when you're trying to get your team to calm down and kind of take control of the pace what's the first step in that that process calm down i mean i wish i had you know i wish there was some great i had some great oratorical skills uh i can run my mouth but i can't you know like it it was just please please like just see this fellas you know and uh to be honest with you against long beach state like the cloud came over our eyes and we had to bring that down a notch. We were in a similar situation there. We, we trailed a lot of the second half. We came back, took the lead. We got a four point lead, made a defensive mistake and they caught us. Um, today, just calming down, right? It was a November game, really great environment. And uh, we didn't win. I, I try to use this boxer mentality, like, there's no championship boxer who's never been hit, right? That might be a double negative, but no championship boxer has never been hit. What the champions do is they get a hit and they go, I like guess, right? And that's what we have to learn to do. We're going to get hit with the people that we're playing. That was a NCAA team that we played. So, yo, come on, breathe and move on to the next play. Coach, thanks Thank for your you. time. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.